Solo Leveling by Chu Gong. Chapter 57 What Happens in the International Guild Conference The next day, almost every broadcast station and newspaper in the U.S. covered the hunters attending the International Guild Conference. But one newspaper on the East Coast had a unique headline. Thomas Andre Knocked Out Thomas Andre was a household name in the U.S. But how had a national-level hunter been knocked out? Was he sick? People threw their money down, snatched up the newspaper with the sensational headline, and read it where they stood. The article's contents were even more shocking. According to the report, a single hunter had taken on Thomas Andre and the entire scavenger guild single-handedly for reasons unknown. The article was accompanied by large pictures showing the bloody and unconscious Thomas and other injured hunters in the aftermath of the fight. Had someone seen the photos without any context, they might have thought it was some kind of terrorist attack. But weren't these extremely high-rank hunters? Thomas, in particular, was a national-level hunter who had survived the raid of Kamish. Everyone who read the article was flabbergasted. They were floored, just like the editor of the newspaper had been when he first laid eyes on the evidence. And once readers reached the part of the article revealing the identity of the solo hunter, they couldn't contain their shock. Oh my! Damn! There was a picture of Gene Wu, the man who had been praised by the international media for rescuing Japan from a great disaster not so long ago. He was walking away from the scene with no emotion on his face, a stark contrast to Thomas lying on his back on the ground. With most of the media focused on the International Guild Conference, the article had an even greater impact. In Korea, the contents of the report spread faster over social media than through traditional news sources. LOL did Jean Woo Sung beat up Thomas Andre FR? Link to article here. Whoa, it's true, says Thomas Andre's entire guild got there but's kicked. Naya, fake news. Makes no sense at all. He crushed the national level hunter plus super elite hunters by himself? Read the article first. It's true. But why were they fighting? No clue. No reason stated. LOL Yanks love to brag about their national level hunters, but that's all they got? Lame. Thomas is no slouch. Jin was just that good. Yeah, Hunter Ji Woo Sung is the pride of Korea. Hey, bartender. I feel great. Give me a glass of patriotism. Most of the comments from Korea expressed surprise. But on the other hand, comments from Japan expressed how proud people were of him. It's obvious Thomas Andre is no match for Hunter Sung. America probably refused to help us because they didn't want to reveal how weak they actually are. I'm really thankful that we had the right kind of hunter come help us. I want to give Hunter Sung a gift of appreciation. Where can I send it? You can send it here. The address is... Isn't that your home address? LMAO hashtag moron. Gene Wu was already a hero in Japan. That their savior had crushed America's hero felt like a huge boost to their self-esteem as a nation. Things had finally quieted down for Ji Wu after he took care of the giants. But now the entire world had its eyes focused on him once more. Why had Ji Wu Sung beaten up Thomas Andre and his guild members? What had happened between the two guild masters? As theories and rumors circulated the internet, Everyone was dying to find out exactly what went down. Jean Wu woke up to find a ridiculous number of reporters gathered in front of his hotel. Where did all these people come from? He knew why the reporters had come to the hotel, but he was surprised at how quickly the news had spread. Still, he had no intention of avoiding them. This was an opportunity to let everyone know what would happen to anyone who dared to cross Jean Wu's son. Besides, he hadn't broken any laws. In the U.S., it was legal to shoot someone in self-defense, 
and this law had been reinforced after the appearance of hunters. It would have been a problem if Ji Wu had continued attacking Thomas after he lost consciousness, but he stopped when his opponent acknowledged defeat. And no one would blame Jin Wu for Dong Su Huang if they found out what had happened to Jin Ho. Jin Wu patiently waited to hear from Adam. Knock, knock. He opened the door, and there stood Adam with two hunters from the Hunter Command Center. Without so much as flinching, Jin Wu asked, Are you here to arrest me? No, I'm not. Adam hastily shook his head. We expected there to be a big fuss. So we're here to escort you to the International Guild Conference. Also, Adam suddenly straightened his jacket and then politely bowed to Ji Wu at a 90 degree angle. Ji Wu wasn't sure what was prompting this. Adam continued, We would like to express our extreme gratitude to you. Ji Wu had no idea what the Hunter Command Center could be so thankful for after he'd lost Kamish Shadow wandered the city looking for Jin Ho, and beaten up Thomas after the American had just happened to show up. Recalling the previous day's events disheartened Jin Wu. He didn't think his demonstration of the shadow extraction process warranted such appreciation, either. If you hadn't stopped when you did, the U.S. would have lost both national-level hunters. Oh, that's what Adam was going on about. Jin Wu nodded in understanding remembering how Adam had run screaming at him to stop. If the agent hadn't shown up and Thomas had somehow gotten a second win, things would have ended differently. The U.S. had already lost one national-level hunter, so they would have done whatever it took to save Thomas. Adam continued, The Hunter Command Center of the U.S. will do our best to prevent this incident from troubling you further. With that, Adam lifted his head. He looked tired after attending a meeting all night regarding how to handle the situation. The final conclusion had been, Do not provoke him. The powers that be had decided to let Jin Wu have his way. His stock with the Hunter Command Center had skyrocketed after he defeated Thomas. From their perspective, they didn't want their relationship with Jin Wu to sour because of the Scavenger Guild's missteps. After all, Thomas was still alive, wasn't he? Adam had been ordered to attend to Jin Wu and proceed with the schedule as planned. He swallowed hard as he made eye contact with Jin Wu. This is the man who crushed the scavenger guild. Under normal circumstances, Jin Wu was a powerful hunter with common sense. However, Adam had witnessed with his own eyes what happened when Jin Wu became enraged. And truth be told, he was a bit envious of Jin Ho that this rage had emerged in the name of protecting those Jin Wu considered his people. Oh boy, will you look how late it is? Adam smiled after checking the time. Shall we go? Sure. Adam escorted Jin Wu past a wall of reporters to a car waiting for them. Koshak, 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 Koshak. The press continued taking pictures until their car was no longer in view. En route to the International Guild Conference, Adam explained what had recently transpired. We have testimony from Don Su Huang's accomplices. The Hunter Command Center will soon release a statement regarding the whole incident. Adam kept emphasizing that this wouldn't affect Jin Wu, and the hunter was glad to hear it. Jean Wu was in the U.S. to collect information at the International Guild Conference on the Magic Beast, who looked like his father. He had questioned Dong Su's shadow soldier, but he didn't know much either. The creature had emerged alone from a dungeon, had the power signature of a magic beast, and had gotten pissed off at the mention of Jean Wu. So is he or isn't he? There was a good chance it wasn't his father because his real father would have come to see his family first. Jinwu's curiosity grew as he found out more about this man. Then, there were Kamish's last words to Jin Wu before he vanished. There exist four humans who have borrowed the powers of the rulers. Beware! Five hunters had survived Kamish's raid. 
chances were four of the five national level hunters had borrowed power from the rulers. Somebody recently killed one of them, Christopher Reeve, but who was powerful enough to force a national level hunter to burn down his mansion and the surrounding woods. Perhaps one of the monarchs mentioned by the King of Giants? If not, did it have anything to do with the recent changes in the dungeons? As various thoughts raced through his head, he spotted the venue for the conference in the distance. When Ji Wu entered the building, all conversations and exchanges of greetings stopped. Some looked at him with curiosity, while others regarded him with fear. Thomas Andre used to rule like a king among hunters, but Jin Wu was the Asian hunter who had beaten Thomas within an inch of his life. Everyone was abuzz about Jin Wu, but no one dared approach him. Nobody knew why he had taken down the scavenger guild. Why even risk greeting Jin Wu when he might have thrashed Thomas for simply looking at him the wrong way? Despite being hunters of magic beasts, they all averted their eyes. Following a lunch hosted by the Hunter Command Center, everyone filed into the main hall, where people presented on a variety of topics. But none of them interested Jean Wu, as most of the discussions revolved around current events. This wouldn't be so boring if Jin Ho was here. Jean Wu patiently waited for something to come up that was worthy of his attention. Eventually, one lecture finally piqued his curiosity, though it wasn't quite what he'd been hoping for. As you know, a number of gates have spawned lately, and along with them, some powerful magic beasts. This wasn't news to anyone congregating in the conference. A few scientists had already presented on the subject earlier, so there was little interest among the attendees. But what you may not know is that some strange movement has been detected in the skies. The hunters finally perked up, Jin Wu included. Others have already brought up the fact that the concentration of magic power in the air has grown denser of late. The scientist was excited now that he had everyone's attention. Allow me to refer to this magic in the atmosphere as magic matter until we come up with a better name for it. Dr. Belzer then gestured to a world map on the screen behind him. Using a laser pointer, he indicated several locations. Did you know this magic matter is clustered in the skies above several countries? The chatter from the hunters got louder. The scientists waited for them to quiet down. In total, there are nine areas where magic matter has accumulated. The doctor listed them off the province of Alberta, Canada. And finally, where the most magic matter has accumulated, Seoul, South Korea. No sooner had Jin Wu heard this through an interpreter on his earpiece than the other hunters in the room looked over at him. Jin Wu had read the article about himself on the ride here, and judging by the way everyone was staring at him over an unrelated matter, it was clear that everyone else had too and it was coloring their view of him. When Jin Wu scanned the other hunters, every one of them avoided his gaze. Oh boy, he sighed seeing the fear in their eyes. Looks like there's been a huge misunderstanding. Still, Jin Wu had no choice but to wait for the hunter command center to clear the air. Dr. Belzer attempted to lighten the awkward atmosphere by cracking a joke. I read the article this morning as well but don't blame Hunter some. If he was the cause of all this magic matter, he wouldn't be a hunter, would he? Ha 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 ha. There was a smattering of nervous laughter before Dr. Belzer continued. As you may have already guessed, I haven't been able to find any common factors among all these locations. It would be hard to find the cause if there was no commonality, especially considering how unprecedented it was. The scientist then brought up a new image on the screen. Here, this shows the skies above the nine places I mentioned. He added that a magic power, detecting camera from a satellite, had taken the image and that it had been enhanced for easier viewing. People could see the clusters of magic matter in the skies above the nine locations. In person, 
The phenomenon wouldn't have looked that bad, but even without the image enhancement, it appeared far from natural. Whoa! Hunters gasped as they looked at the large screen. They needed to discover the reason behind this quickly. The skies above Seoul appeared especially concerning, making it look like the capital was the eye of a storm. Jean Wu wondered why there were nine. Could it have anything to do with the nine monarchs? There was no way this was just a coincidence. However, since the King of Giants was already dead, the number nine didn't have the same significance. At that moment, Dr. Belzer snuck a look at Jean Wu. Their eyes met again, but this time, the scientist was no longer laughing. Since we don't know the cause of this phenomenon, we currently have no way to handle it. With that, Dr. Belzer wrapped up his long presentation. However, although we have no method at the moment, we must work toward one, as our world is about to radically change once again. As the scheduled programming came to a close, Mr. Brannon, the director of the Hunter Command Center, took the stage to make an important announcement. His unscheduled appearance caused quite a stir. Was he going to make an official statement regarding last night's incident? The director had to ask the audience to settle down. There is an urgent matter I must bring to every hunter's attention. The hunters gathered here were the top in their field, not a gaggle of rowdy school children. The director's sentence set a chilly silence through the room. The average person could not fathom the level of concentration the highest rank hunters possessed as a basic instinct. Mr. Brennan nodded as he scanned the room until he spotted Jean Wu. Hunter Jean Wu sung. Mr. Brannon had been briefed on every single detail about yesterday's incident, and he greeted the man at the center of it all with his eyes, expressing his appreciation to the hunter for sparing Thomas's life. Without knowing exactly what was going on, the other hunter stirred upon seeing the director acknowledge Jean Wu. After a brief pause, Mr. Brennan continued, With a heavy heart, I regret to inform you that. The time had come. Jean Wu realized this was the moment he had been waiting for. Two weeks ago, Hunter Christopher Reed was killed by unknown assailants. It was a frightening revelation to the hunters in the audience. To hear that one of the most powerful of their ilk had been murdered was an even bigger shock than the incident involving Jean Wu. It wasn't just a matter of who won or lost in a fight between two powerful hunters. The director presented some information on the screen. Remnants of the fire, a mansion in ashes, and the corpse of Christopher Reed with a huge hole in his chest. Moans were heard throughout the room as the images confirmed the death of a national-level hunter. No one could deny that Christopher had been murdered. Director Brannon was flooded with questions, but he shook them off. I'm sorry but I'll present the facts before I field any questions. He had more important things to do than answer queries. The director briefly stole a glance at the corner of the room where Jean Wu was planted, quietly contemplating the matter at hand. Director Brannon had mixed feelings about Jin Wu's placid demeanor. However, there was no time to waste. He pressed a button on a remote to change the image on the screen. This is the prime suspect in this case. The face of an Asian man filled the screen. The hunters immediately noticed something odd. He closely resembled someone in the room. But with what had happened to Thomas Fresh on their minds, no one dared share their thoughts. Jean Wu pursed his lips. The photograph, which had to have been taken when the man was brought to the Hunter Command Center to be identified, resembled his father to A.T. Jean Wu bit his lower lip. Why was my father? Dungeons were the territory of the rulers, but Jean Wu had no idea why they would send out a magic beast in the form of his father. Whatever the reason, he could feel the rage building inside him. The other hunters mistook the reason for his anger, so they tried real hard not to glance his way. Don't look back. Don't look back. They only look alike. It's just a coincidence. 
Asians look very similar to one another, don't they? But no matter how I look at that picture, the director referred to Ilwan Sung as Suspect S. He went on to explain where Suspect S had been found, what had happened during this discovery, as well as what had followed. The hunters were taken aback to hear he had beaten up Dong Su Huang during the interrogation and escaped. Dong Su Huang was someone the Hunter Command Center had recognized for his abilities and scouted to the U.S. He was an ace hunter with the Scavenger Guild, one of the best guilds in the world. Since Dong Su's death had yet to be made public, the news of his defeat was shocking. Heck, even a national level hunter wouldn't have lasted long if they went up against a group of hunters at Dong Su's level. No wonder Suspect S was the Hunter Command Center's prime suspect. The Hunter Command Center has officially concluded that humanoid magic beasts escaped from a dungeon and targeted Hunter Reed. As Director Brandon continued to speak, footage of Suspect S stepping on Dong Su's neck appeared on the screen behind him. The prospect of Suspect S holding enough power to stomp on a powerful S-rank hunter such as Dong Su like a tiny bug horrified those in attendance. But Ji Wu wasn't surprised. The rulers had the power to create dungeons, and those same beings had created Suspect S, a magic beast, with a certain purpose. It would have been more shocking if Dong Su Huang had won. Ji Wu was concentrating on Suspect S. He appeared to be trying to communicate with Dong Su in the footage. Is he? talking to Dong Su? Jin Wu's eyes shot wide open as he focused his perception like he often did in battle. Time seemed to slow down and he began reading Suspect S's lips. Don't ever set foot in Korea. I say this not for my son's sake but for your own. You won't be able to close your eyes even when you're dead. Bottom. Jin Wu's heart raced. That last part did he say, not able to close your eyes when you're dead? If Jin Wu had read the man's lips correctly, that meant Suspect S knew about his existence. Luckily, there was an easier way to verify the contents of the conversation. Jin Wu hastily called to the most recent addition to his shadow army. Greed. The new soldier responded immediately to the unspoken question. It is as you suspect, my king. While Jin was mind raced, the director's long explanation came to an end. We're asking the international community to be on the lookout for Suspect S. Please contact us as soon as you locate this man. That is all. With that, the floodgates opened, and the questions poured out again as hands flew up in the air. Yes, the hunter over there? The director pointed to someone. Is there any evidence that Suspect S isn't human? His magic power signature was identical to that of a magic beast. Next Hunter. You said he insisted he was a man who went missing in a dungeon. Did the Hunter he claimed to be actually exist? Yes, he did exist. Next Hunter. Then why don't you reveal his identity? Oh, Director Brannon tried his best not to look at Ji Wu as he responded. We have decided not to reveal his identity because he is related to one of the hunters here. That put a sudden end to the questions, as the statement pretty much confirmed their suspicions. The room had fallen silent, so the director prepared to leave the stage. Any last questions? Someone sitting in the last row raised his hand and opened his mouth even before the director pointed to him. Wouldn't it be easier to track him down if you revealed his identity? Even without looking, everyone knew from the deep voice speaking Chinese that it was Ji Gang Lu, the seven star and national level hunter. Surrounded by his guildmates, dozens of China's best hunters, Ji Gang gazed at the director with a serious expression. The director was at a loss for words, but Ji Gang pressed him again. Don't you think so, Mr. Brannon? The Hunter Command Center had decided to classify Suspect S's information, 
but Director Brannon couldn't see any reason to refuse. Beep. He pressed a button on the remote control, and Ilwan Sung's information was revealed on the screen. The room erupted in gasps and murmurs. The hunters couldn't believe that the first humanoid magic beast emerging from a dungeon had taken the form of Jin was missing father. Could this be a mere coincidence? Ji Gang observed the screen before raising his hand again. The director acknowledged him. Hunter Liu, I have a question for Hunter Sung. The director looked at Jin Wu, who nodded and turned to face Ji Gang. Ji Gang's voice resounded through the large room. If suspect us really is your missing father and hunters try to take him down, what will you do? Ji Wu thought about it for a second. If he's a magic beast, I will end him with my own hands. But if he's my actual father, what then? The others waited with bated breath. I will protect my family even if it means becoming an enemy of all hunters. Did you really mean that? Adam had been waiting for Jean Wu outside the conference room. Jean Wu knew exactly what the agent was referring to. He smiled. Yes. Ha uh ha. -huh. This was no laughing matter. But Adam couldn't help himself at Jin Wu's smile. More than 500 top rank hunters, the elite of the elite, representing 120 countries, had been in that conference room by the Hunter Command Center's invitation. Jean Wu had told them straight to their faces that he had no problem. Becoming an enemy of all hunters. That wasn't something one could pull off with courage alone. More surprisingly, not one person had mocked him for it. Ji Gang, for example, was known to be ruthless, but even he quietly observed Jin Wu's declaration without contesting it. The Hunter Command Center agents who had been watching the event via monitors, had also gone slack-jawed over Jin Wu's pronouncement, Adam included. Presently, Adam sounded impressed. Only two people in the world could have gotten away with saying something like that in front of those people, Hunter Sung. Jin Wu was curious. Who's the other person? He's in the hospital right now. Adam's bitter smile made it clear to whom he was referring. Considering Thomas's arrogant personality, it made sense. Though I'm not sure he has a leg to stand on anymore. Jean Wu smiled brightly as he recalled Thomas's face as he surrendered. Adam began detailing what was next on the agenda. Next is the dinner party. The Hunter Command Center went all out, so if you don't have anything urgent to attend to... Jean Wu shook his head. I'm planning to go to the hospital. Pardon? Adam was puzzled. Had Jean Wu sustained an injury last night? That was to be expected. It had been such a fierce battle that Thomas, a national level hunter, had been so seriously injured he couldn't even be revived by healers. It stood to reason that Jean Wu would have been wounded here and there. I'm worried about Jin Ho. Oh, Adam had been presumptuous in his concern for Jean Wu. Still, he had to ask. Are you experiencing any pain in your shoulder or wrist from last night? Hmm? Um, never mind. Adam waved, flustered, when he and Jin Wu noticed the hunters conversing in small groups nearby stepping aside to let someone pass. They made way for Ji Gang Lu and his subordinates, who walked right up to Jin Wu. Ah, what's going on with those two? The room quieted down as the tension between Jin Wu and Ji Gang brought everything to a standstill. The other hunters uncomfortably looked back and forth between the two of them. Why is Ji Gang Lu doing this? Is this because of what Hunter Sung said earlier? I thought it was weird Lu let it go so easily. Jin Wu had clearly been provoking his fellow hunters, and Ji Gang had been the one to pose the initial question, after all. Would Ji Gang be next to fall after Thomas? Nervous that something was about to go down, the others paid close attention to any minute changes in the two hunters' expressions. Adam, who had unintentionally ended up stuck between them, turned pale. Um, excuse me, sirs. 
Adam snapped his mouth shut when Ji Gang took a step closer and started to say something. Jin Wu looked serious as he listened. What's he saying? Jin Wu didn't understand a lick of Chinese. He'd screwed his expression into something approaching seriousness to match Ji Gang's, but trying to listen to a language he didn't understand was rather difficult. In any case, it didn't seem like he was being mocked or cursed. Adam whispered in Jin Wu's ear. He says he killed the giant type magic beast on the Chinese coast that escaped from you in Japan. Jin Wu looked at Adam, startled. You speak Chinese too? Since I'm in charge of the Asian branch, I can speak several Asian languages. Oh, plus a little Russian, Spanish, Arabic, and German. For a fleeting moment, Jin Wu thought about how convenient it would be to have a shadow soldier like Adam, but he checked himself. Even during their brief exchange, Ji Gang kept talking as if he had much he wanted to say to Jin Wu. Then I'm counting on you. Will do. With a determined look on his face, Adam nodded and continued to interpret for Ji Gang. Hunter Lu says he was quite surprised as the magic beast was much more powerful than he expected. It was especially difficult fighting the giant in water. Jin Wu had felt similarly when first fighting the giants. They were very quick considering their size. Ji Gang must have faced quite a challenge battling it in water rather than on solid ground. As Ji Gang continued to speak, Adam brightened. He's wanted to meet you ever since then, Hunter Sung. He was curious about the hunter who easily defeated all those powerful magic beasts. As soon as Adam finished translating, Ji Gang finally smiled and held out his hand. It looked like Ji Gang's serious mien had been a result of nervousness. Ji Wu returned the smile and shook his hand. There was no reason to refuse a handshake offered by one of the best hunters around. Now that he knew nothing would happen, Adam could finally relax. Phew! This was the purpose of the International Guild Conference, to let hunters bond. Ji Gang laughed as he said something else. Jean would look back at Adam. Is he telling a joke? Oh! Adam listened hard, then chuckled. He says he's glad that you laid into Hunter Andre. Even though he wasn't there, he says Hunter Andre probably did something to deserve it. Jean Wu grinned. His first impression of Ji Gang was that he was a prickly middle-aged man, but he was funnier than Jean Wu expected. After this exchange, the two men released each other's hands. But then Ji Gang's expression turned somber. The smile disappeared from Adam's face, as well, as he hastily translated what Ji Gang was saying. He genuinely hopes that Suspect S is not your father. He says he never wants to fight you, Hunter Sung. Jin Wu wordlessly nodded. There you two are? Both Jin Wu and Ji Gang turned toward the newcomer. The person had a presence but no magic power, so it wasn't a hunter. As they suspected, their eyes landed on the director of the Hunter Command Center. He looked at them both and nervously asked, could I trouble you both for a moment? Jean Wu looked at Adam, but the agent shook his head. He had no idea what this was about. What was going on? Before responding to the director, Jean Wu widened his perception and scanned the movement of people in the room. Two people with a great amount of magic power. They were being escorted by several people and heading in the same direction. Considering that he and Ji Gang had been approached at the same time, Jin Wu concluded that this was no coincidence. Did something happen? Seeing Jin Wu's hesitation, Adam decided to interject. Oh, sir, Hunter Sun needs to go to the hospital where Hunter Jin Ho Yu is staying. Jin Wu put his hand on Adam's shoulder and shook his head, then turned to the director. I have time. The director beamed and turned to Ji Gang. How about you, Hunter Lu? Sure. Great. Please follow me. The director led the way, looking rather pleased with himself. 
The two men's destinations were different. Agents escorted Ji Gang down a hallway to the left, while Jean Wu continued to follow the director. That's odd. Three powerful hunters, the two with the strong magic energy, who had gone ahead earlier plus Ji Gang, had been shepherded to one location. Ji Wu had expected to join them, but was being escorted elsewhere. He tried to come up with a few theories before eventually asking, Why am I the only one going in a different direction? Oh! Director Brandon considered a response, but ended up passing the buck. There's someone waiting for you. She'll explain everything. Jean Wu sensed a presence in the room located at the end of the hall. Huh? This magic signature is... He hadn't expected to ever see her again. I see you already know who it is. The apprehensive director had started to sweat. We go to extreme lengths to keep her in a hidden location, but as this is such an important matter, did the Hunter Command Center ask her to do this? No, not at all. She requested it. She said she wanted to see you. Director Brandon opened the door, and Jean Wu met the eyes of the lady awaiting him. It's been a while, Hunter Sum. Indeed, Mrs. Selner. It was the upgrader Norma Selner, possessor of a unique ability. Considering how much time had passed since he last saw her, Jean Wu was surprised to see her eyes hadn't changed. The intense fear that erupted whenever she looked at him was still there. But if that was the case, what could compel her to meet him again? I wasn't expecting to see you again. He sat down across from Mrs. Selner. Adam was acting as the interpreter, so he stuck close to Jin Wu's side. Mrs. Selner politely bowed her head to Jean Wu. I apologize for last time. My mind wasn't in the right place back then. Ji Wu raised his hand to stop her. He didn't mean to bring up the past and solicit an apology from her. Mrs. Selner looked at the director, who gave her a resolute nod. She hesitated but finally spoke with some difficulty. Recently, I keep having the same dream every night. Ji Wu assumed he hadn't been called here to interpret her dreams. What kind of dream is it? Every night, I see the top hunters becoming the hunted. Someone hunting hunters. Jean Wu had a hunch this had something to do with him. And a few days later, that dream comes true. You mean, Christopher Reed? Mrs. Selner nodded. The director took over the explanation. We warned Mr. Reed about the danger, but he didn't listen to us. The result was, well, I'm sure you know. Her voice shaky, Mrs. Selner continued. Powerful hunters who defend this world will continue to be killed. The ones hunting them will never stop. In other words, Jean Wu calmly cleared his throat. You're here to warn me to be on the lookout. No. Mrs. Selner shook her head firmly. This wasn't a warning? Jean Wu wasn't sure how to react. Mrs. Selner pleaded. You must protect them. I've lost. Two words Thomas had never expected to come out of his mouth again. The phrase repeated over and over in his head as he opened his eyes. He was in the hospital. When was the last time I was in a hospital? Unlike Jean Wu, who had practically lived at the hospital for most of his career as a hunter, Thomas hadn't been in one since awakening. Jean Wu had started off as the lowest of the year rank hunters while Thomas had been an apex hunter from the start. How the tables had turned. The result of their match left quite an impact on Thomas. I really lost. He felt as if his soul had left his body as he sat up. Talk attack. Someone stopped typing on a keyboard. Thomas turned to see that Laura, the head manager of Scavenger Guild, sat by his bedside at an appropriate distance. Her fingertips hovered above her laptop keyboard. You're up. Yeah. Thomas avoided eye contact with her as he rubbed the bottom of his chin. He was relieved to see by the length of his beard that not much time seemed to have passed. 
it's been about a day? Yes, sir. Laura nodded. The doctor who examined you initially said we should be prepared for you to be out for several weeks. His condition had been that bad at one point. Laura couldn't decide whether him waking up a day after that diagnosis was very much like Thomas, or him being unconscious for a day was very unlike him. Laura drew closer to him. Should I call the doctor? No, not yet. Thomas shook his aching head while massaging his temples. He could still feel the impact from that man striking his head. It was a horrible pain he never wanted to experience again, and there was nothing any doctor could do about it. Besides, there was something he needed to check first. What happened to Mr. Wong? Laura opened her mouth but didn't know how to phrase her response. Instead, she just shook her head. I see. Thomas thought about it for a moment and then casually changed the subject. Any other damages? Many hunters were injured, but they've all recovered thanks to the Hunter Command Center's quick response. Thomas couldn't help but raise his voice in shock. There were no other fatalities? Yes, that's correct. He blew out of breath. No casualties after such a fierce battle could only mean that their opponent had gone easy on them. It was a crushing defeat. It was difficult to feel upset about such a loss. In fact, Thomas found himself in awe of Jean Wu. The Korean man had not only destroyed Thomas, but the elite hunters he had brought with him. Rather than fear, he felt respect for Jean Wu. Thomas had always thought that power equaled truth, so the loss was a major shock to him. But though Thomas had been soundly defeated, he didn't feel bad about it. Did his lack of regret come from the awareness of the power gap between himself and his opponent? He should have been furious at the defeat and raring for revenge. But instead, Laura interrupted his swirling thoughts by handing him a small rectangular glasses case. Thomas looked at Laura curiously. Your sunglasses were collected at the scene, but they were badly damaged, so... Clack. Inside the case was a brand new pair of Thomas's favorite sunglasses. Thomas chuckled as he put them on. I owe you as always. Laura had been worried that Thomas would awaken a fit. Seeing him react so calmly brought a pleasant smile to her face. Just doing my job. Thomas stared off into the distance, then quietly spoke. Mr. Wong, make sure he gets the best funeral. He was still a member of our guild. Understood. And... Laura looked up from taking notes. Please tell Hunter's son that scavenger guild. No, I, Thomas Andre, offer him an official apology. Protect the hunters. Why would Mrs. Selner say something like that? Jean Wu was confused. Why me? Mrs. Selner debated where to begin, then slowly recounted her dream. I tried to remember the people who were chasing the hunters, but that was in vain. The only thing she could remember when she woke up was that their faces were hidden in black. So I decided to try something. I used my ability within my dream to try and uncover their true nature. Is that why you looked into my eyes the last time? Yes. Mrs. Selner freely admitted how she employed her ability. Bought up. Jin was heart pounded as he thought back to their first encounter. What had Mrs. Selner seen in Jin was eyes that had frightened her so? For now, Jin Wu set aside his curiosity and gave her his full attention. What I saw was infinite power. But after locking eyes with that thing, I had no choice but to wake up from my dream. Jean Wu looked down to see Mrs. Selner's hands were shaking. I still remember the voice I heard the moment I saw it. Both the director and Adam appeared very nervous. What did it tell you? Asked Jean Wu. It told me to go back and quietly wait for the war. Mrs. Selner got goosebumps, and she quivered as she recalled the dream. 
The voice in this dream was vivid and unlike anything she had ever heard in real life. But the words provided a clue for Jean Wu. That matches what the King of Giants said. The King of Giants had told Jean Wu about the impending war between the rulers and the monarchs. But the rulers couldn't be the only ones getting ready to battle. So the question was which side the creatures and misses. Selner's dreams were on. Meanwhile, Ji Wu hadn't gotten an answer, so he asked again, What does any of this have to do with me protecting the hunters? Because it was the same power as the one within you, Hunter Sung. Those words sent a jolt through Ji Wu. On that day, Mrs. Selner had seen the power of the Shadow Monarch. So if she had seen the same kind of power in the killers within her dream, that meant they had to be the monarchs. Jin Wu's face darkened. Mrs. Selner quickly continued her explanation at Jin Wu's peculiar expression. They are beings above hunters, so in order to stop them, we need someone who possesses the same level of power they do. The director spoke up. Actually, we're quite torn whether you're the only one who can protect the hunters as Mrs. Selner claims. But if they had arranged this meeting despite objections, has the Hunter Command Center changed their mind about me after yesterday's fight? With the truth laid bare, Director Brannon responded awkwardly. That is correct. The power gap between Jean Wu and the other national level hunters was apparent. The unfortunate incident had provided them with hope. The Hunter Command Center needed Jin Wu's help now more than ever. The U.S. had lost one national level hunter to the creatures already so they needed to protect Thomas Andre at all costs. You're an extraordinary hunter. Of course, we would compensate you for helping us out. They were ready to give him whatever he wanted, including Kamish Rune Stone. They had given up scouting Jean Wu and annoying him with an offer he already declined. After Christopher Reed's death, they decided the best course of action would be to ask for his help in protecting the most powerful hunter in the U.S. instead. Jean Wu was torn. Mrs. Selner spelled out the situation for him. In this world, there are hunters who have been very blessed. Until now, they have used their power to defend the world. But without them, this world is in mortal danger. Jean Wu made his decision. I'm sorry. The director was shocked by Jin Wu's firm rejection that left no room for any doubt. Is it because you harbor ill will toward Hunter Andre? Jin Wu shook his head. No, it's because I don't know the enemy I have to fight yet. Whoever they were, Jin Wu had never encountered them. Jin Wu wasn't the type of person to make a promise he couldn't keep, so naturally, he couldn't promise to protect Thomas Andre from an unknown threat. I'll keep an eye on the situation for now. He'd take care of things as best he could in his own way. This was the same cool attitude he'd had when he first entered that double dungeon. His perspective hadn't changed since then. Plus, Jean Wu had countless shadow soldiers he could rely on to pass him information. If he planted one with every hunter the Hunter Command Center was keeping an eye on, he could respond to any attacks without delay. If that's all... With a plan in mind, Jean Wu rose from his seat. It had been quite a busy day for President Go Back in South Korea. A fight had broken out between Jean Wu and Thomas the day before the International Guild Conference. Worried, he requested more information from the Hunter Command Center. Finally, he received word that, based on their investigation, the Scavenger Guild had been at fault, and Jean Wu wouldn't suffer any consequences from the incident. You? Finally able to relax, President Go plopped down in his chair. He did quite a fright at the prospect of Jean Wu ending up in an American prison. Wait a minute. If he thought about it, who could hope to detain Jean Wu in the first place? He'd knocked out Thomas Andre of all people. President Go let loose a hearty laugh. I may have been worried for nothing. Ha ha. He laughed so much that his throat felt dry. 
A bottle of water sat on a side table a bit farther from his desk. President Go quietly stared at the bottle and then held out his hand. The water bottle flew toward him, and he casually snatched it out of the air with practiced precision. Smiling, he twisted the lid open. Director Wu will surely have a story to tell me when he gets back. Uh huh. Having Jinchul accompany Jin Wu to the U.S. had been a great choice.